Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video about certification. In this video, I'm going to go over the new generation of certifications that are now available for Server 2008. And that's right, new generation. No more MCSAs or MCSEs. But speaking of you MCSAs and MCSEs, well, I'm going to go over the upgrade paths to show you how easy it is to convert your MCSA or E up to the new generation of certifications. Then I'll show you how to sign up for a Microsoft exam. And then finally, we'll wrap things up by going over some exam prep tips. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the new generation of Server 2008 certifications. And yep, just like it says here, new alphabet soup for everyone. So it's a whole new set of letters out there. And so basically, for a network administrator, here are the new certification blocks. We first of all have MCTS, which is Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, which you would obtain by taking any one of many different exams, but we'll go over that in just a few minutes. Moving up a notch from that, you would have MCITP, Microsoft Certified IT Professional, and then we have the Server Administrator flavor, and then we also have the MCITP Enterprise Administrator flavor. And again, just to emphasize, there is no MCSE or A for Windows Server 2008. They have completely done away with those certifications. What we have here is a whole new block of certifications where here you can see at the bottom we have that technology specialist. Then moving up you'll see that we have the IT professional, the ITP certification for network administrators. Now if you are a programmer, then instead of the IT professional, you would go for the professional developer. But I will tell you that this course has nothing to do with any exam that will help you towards the professional developer, and that's a whole different program. But if you are looking to do this from a programmer's point of view, that is the equivalent to the IT professional. And then at the top level here, you'll see we have the Microsoft Certified Architect. Now, this Microsoft Certified Architect is kind of an unknown certification right now. Um, there's not a whole lot out there on it. And, you know, Microsoft changes this stuff on what almost seems like a daily basis. So even by the time you're watching this, there may be more information out on the Architect series. As a matter of fact, even right now, I can tell you that there is another series that is being introduced, and that series is called the Master Series. And that master series is either going to go right here or possibly is going to be equal to the architect. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty. It's just rolling out right now. But in the meantime, for right now, let's just worry about getting technology specialist and IT professional. All right. Now, here's where we get to the details on how to make each one of these credentials happen for you. As far as MCTS, like I mentioned a moment ago, we take any one exam from, quite honestly, a large selection to choose from. Any one exam makes you a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist. It essentially almost takes the place of the old MCP, Microsoft Certified Professional, where any one exam would get you that recognition. One thing that is kind of cool I like is when you get multiple MCTS certifications, you can now, instead of having all kinds of logos all over the place, you can now put multiple MCTSs into a single logo like I have here. I actually have five MCTS certifications, but here's an example of a logo that I created for myself with three of them that associate with one another. Then, let's move on up now to the MCITP Server Administrator. Well, in order to get this certification, if you're going to do it from scratch, then there are three exams. And what I mean by from scratch is if you don't currently have any Microsoft certifications. If you're going to be upgrading from existing Microsoft certifications, I'll show you how you accomplish that in just a moment. But from scratch, here's what you need. You need to take the 70-640 exam, which is going to give you an MCTS in Active Directory. You need to take the 70-642 exam, which is what this course is based about, which is all about network infrastructure. 
And then you need to take the 70-646 exam to make yourself an IT professional server administrator. Okay, so when you take 640, you become an MCTS. When you take 642, you again get a second MCTS. And it's at that point when you have the two of them that you can make a nifty little logo like you see here. And then the 646 is what finally makes you an MCITP and specifically to the server administrator. Now, if you want to get MCITP Enterprise Administrator, from scratch, it will take five exams. Now, these five exams are, first of all, you have to take either 70-620 or 624, which are both VISTA certification exams. Yes, I know it might sound weird to be an enterprise administrator. You need to take a client exam. But yes, you do. Because in order to really oversee an enterprise, you have to understand clients along with your servers. So after you take your VISTA client exam, you again have to take 640 and 42, just like you did with the server administrator. You have to also take 70-643, which gives you an MCTS on application infrastructure. And then finally, you need to take the 70-647, which is the exam that makes you an IT professional enterprise administrator. Now, the MCTS, just to try to help you relate with ex what you might know about existing Microsoft certifications, many people consider the MCTS to be like the MCP. The MCITP server administrator, a lot of people relate that with the old MCSA, which if you think about it, Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator was the old title, and that really is like being a server administrator. And then the MCITP Enterprise Administrator is thought to be pretty much taking the place of MCSE. Instead of the Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, now you're an Enterprise Administrator, which is really what an engineer always was. Okay, now that we understand all the new alphabet soup, let's talk about upgrades. For an MCSA in Windows Server 2003 to move up to MCITP Server Administrator, you only need two exams, whereas from scratch you had to take three. And the reason why is because you can take one exam, the 70-648, which will take the place of two of your MCTS certifications. And I know it's, it's kind of small in the picture here, but the two certifications are the Active Directory and the Network Infrastructure certifications. So 648 takes the place of having to take 640 and 642 individually. But in order to be eligible to take the 648 exam, you must be an MCSA in Windows Server 2003. Once you've taken that upgrade exam, then that leaves you with only one more exam to take, and that is the same 70-646 that one would have to do if you were doing it from scratch to get your MCITP server administrator certification. So you pretty much get to save on one exam if you're already in MCSA in server 2003. Now if you're in MCSA in Windows Server 2003 and you want to upgrade to ITP enterprise administrator, well again if you were doing it from scratch you would have to take five exams whereas in this case you only have to take four. And the reason why is because once again, 648, which you would be eligible for by being an MCSA in Windows Server 2003, takes the place of the 640 and 642 exams. So you get two for the price of one. But you still are going to be on the hook for your Vista client exam, your application infrastructure exam, and the 70-647 MCITP enterprise exam. Okay, so in order to upgrade from MCSA Server 2003 to either of the MCITPs in Windows Server 2008, basically you get to save on one exam because you get to take that one upgrade exam which is you get two MCTS certifications for. All right, now what if you're an MCSE in Windows Server 2003? Well, if you're an MCSE and you want to go to MCITP Server Administrator, 
Again, you only have to take two exams. But in this case, instead of 70-648 being the upgrade exam, you could take 70-649. And here's the thing. You actually can take 70-648, which would give you two MCTS certifications, and then 646 to make yourself an ITP server administrator. But let's be real. If you're an MCSE and they're going to let you take the 70-649 exam, which takes the place of 640, 642, and 643, and will give you three MCTS certifications for the price of one, I'd do it. So that's what I recommend. Although if your only interest is server administrator, you could just take the 70-648 just like the MCSA upgrade. Now, the reason that the 649 was really created is if you're looking to upgrade from MCSE 2003 to MCITP Enterprise Administrator. And that's because instead of having to take five exams, now it goes all the way down to only three exams. And again, it's because you get three for the price of one with this 649 exam, so you get to save on two exams. But you still have to take a Vista client exam, and you still have to take the 70-647 Enterprise Administrator exam. All right. I hope that wasn't too confusing for you. If it was, by all means, go back, rewind, watch the last few minutes, go to the appropriate portion that relates to your situation. And then if you still need additional help, you can always go to the Microsoft Learning website. And I'll give you the URL for that in just a little bit. All right, so now we understand the alphabet soup. And now we know how to upgrade if we already have some of the old alphabet soup. But how do we actually sign up to take these exams? Well, we have one website to sign up for all the exams, and that is Prometric.com. And it's really not that tough. Now, here's the thing. The reason I say one website to sign up for all of them is because Prometric is now the exclusive provider for Microsoft exams. So there's no guessing about, well, should I go here? Should I go here? Is, is one thing better than another? Just one place to go. And when you go to Prometric.com, it really is quite simple. All you have to do is right here, you'll see for test takers, you go ahead and enter in that you want to be taking an IT certification exam, and it's going to be a Microsoft exam. And then down here, you go ahead and say what state you're in. And when you go to the next screen, it'll ask you other questions like what exam do you want to take? And it'll give you a list of centers that are in your state. It really shouldn't be that difficult for you to do. Now, one other thing I want you to know before you go and sign up for your exam. Microsoft periodically offers a, what's called their second shot promotion. And what it means just what it sounds like. It means that if you go and take an exam and you fail it, they will let you go back and try again a second time for free. Now, I don't care how confident you may or may not be, I completely would never understand why somebody wouldn't take the time, it's only a few moments, to go to Microsoft's website and register for this second shot offer. I do it on every one of my exams. It doesn't matter if you go in and pass. If you go in and pass, it's not like they say, well, why did you register for the second shot? No. You just always have that available in your back pocket if you need it. And I will also tell you, if you're one of those people who are always really nervous about taking exams, and I tell, I'll tell you, over the years, I've met many people who totally knew what they were doing. They knew how to answer those questions, but they were failing exams just because they get nervous. Well, this second shot offer gives you the ability to relax those nerves because you can go in with the freedom knowing that if you fail, eh, no big deal. I'll just come back and do it again. So this offer comes and goes. I happen to know that the offer is currently in existence right now, but may or may not be by the time that you are listening to this. So always go to Microsoft's website and check to see if that offer is available. All right, so let's talk about how to prepare 
prepare for the exam. So here's what I recommend. First of all, if you are in need, or if you feel that you're in need of some additional supplemental material, if you're struggling in certain areas of understanding, there is a book that I've taken a look at, and I feel pretty comfortable recommending it. Uh, I, I don't always do this with all the books that I take a look at, but this one I, I found pretty useful, and that's the MCTS Self-Paced Training Kit for the 70-642 exam. And it's done by Microsoft Press. And if you're out at the bookstore, this is what it looks like. All right, so now this is not necessarily a book that you want to read cover to cover, but it'll make for a great reference guide if there's a certain area that you're struggling in and you need to look something up. Now, besides the book, I do recommend, whether you go out and need additional supplemental material or not, included in this courseware, we've given you a Transcender practice exam, and I recommend that you use this heavily. Transcender is very focused on making sure that they present to you questions that relate directly to the objectives which are on the real certification exam. Now, if you've ever heard rumors about being able to take some of these practice tests and just memorize the questions and you'll go out and pass the exam, well, don't believe them. Maybe it was true years ago, but it is not true today. You're not gonna find the actual question. You're not gonna find the exact same questions. You are gonna find questions that are on the same objectives. And so what that means is when you look at a question on a Transcender practice exam, you need to feel comfortable with the topic of the question, not just answering the question itself. And although I have said here, look, I want you to take it several times, I want you to be careful. Don't take it several times again and again and again and again until you've memorized the answers to the questions. That's not what you're trying to do. You want to go through it several times to where you can honestly say to yourself, if someone were to walk up to me in the street and ask me a question that was in any way, shape, or form similar to what I'm seeing on this Transcender practice exam, I could answer it. I could explain it. Heck, I could teach it. And that is one of the main keys, I feel, to successfully passing the real exam. Now, along those same lines of doing something several times, I think you should review this course at least twice. If you went through this entire course and said to yourself, gosh, I, I definitely feel like I know more than I knew before, but there's also definitely stuff that I don't think I fully get. Well, you are part of the majority. Pretty much nobody is expected to go through any course, whether it's this one, or an online one, a classroom, it doesn't matter what type of course you take. You're not gonna get everything in one quick shot. So go through and watch it a second time and you will be amazed at how much more you were able to hold on to. And if you still aren't feeling comfortable with everything, well watch it a third time. Go through the course as many times as you need to to fully understand everything that I have presented to you. And don't be ashamed about it because you are part of the majority. And that majority, by the way, includes me. I don't ever watch a course only once. I am human and my brain can only absorb so much in one shot. Another suggestion that I have for you is to get some virtual machines and push some buttons. Now here's the thing. I used to recommend to my all of my students to go out and get as many computers as they can and set up a network and go through and actually do the things that you're learning about. I used to recommend going out and finding some used refurbished computers or whatever it takes to work within your budget but have some computers in front of you to be able to actually touch this stuff. I mean, if you're just listening to what I have to say, you're missing a whole lot. You need to be able to touch it, and I really want you to follow along in all my videos and try everything that I'm showing you. The cool thing is that today, 
you don't need to go out and get a whole bunch of computers. You can have one fairly decent computer and then go get some virtual computer type software like Virtual PC or VMware. Because I will tell you that both VMware and Microsoft both give you at a minimum free trials of their virtual computer software. So go get your hands on a copy, implement multiple virtual machines on your computer so you can be in Windows Server 2008. And maybe you can also have a Vista or an XP client that's communicating with the server. Or maybe you have a domain controller and a member server and have them talking to each other. That is how you are going to get good with this. So please, please, please get your hands on some machines, push some buttons. And as I mentioned a little while ago, you want to go to the Microsoft Learning website, which I have the URL listed here, which is http www.microsoft.com slash learning. Pretty easy to remember, right? Microsoft.com slash learning and make sure that you know the objectives to this exam as well as have a full understanding toward what certification you are attempting to achieve. Now, on the day of the test, right? You've done all the things that I've recommended getting ready for the test and now the day is here. First of all, and I guess this technically could be the day before the test, but don't stay up all night studying. I know this is probably something you've heard before. I know I had teachers back in my high school days always telling me, don't stay up cramming the night before a big exam. Get a good night's sleep because the brain functions well when it is rested. And I will tell you that this is a true scientific fact. The human brain functions better when it is well rested. But with that being said, if you are somebody who has had great success cramming the night before, try it. Don't change what works. Learn about yourself. If you happen to be one of those people who can't pass a test unless you specifically do stay up all night studying. I'm okay with that. Give it a try. But if you're not one of those people, and that's a definite minority of people, I strongly recommend that you get a good night's sleep because here's the reality. This is not like a high school test where you just cram the night before and answer a bunch of questions. This is an experience-based certification exam where you're supposed to know this stuff, not just memorize as much as possible. Is it possible to memorize the exam or memorize material for the exam? Absolutely. But it's definitely not the recommended way to go. And I will tell you from over a decade's worth of experience, people who do that have always had less percentage of success than the people who really get to know the stuff and then go get a good night's sleep the night before. Now, when you get to this test center, do yourself a favor. Leave your cell phone, pagers, anything electronic or really anything at all, your wallet, your purse, anything you can admit, books, leave it all in your car. Different test centers have slightly different interpretations of the test taking policy and you just don't need the added stress of having a test center confiscating one of your personal belongings and putting it in and, and they're, they're required to put it locked away somewhere but you don't want to have to be thinking about it so just do yourself a favor and leave it all in your car the only thing you want to bring in is two forms of ID and well then your car keys but anyway, you need to have the two forms of ID. And I really want to emphasize two forms of ID. If you only have one, they're not going to let you take the test. So make sure that you have two forms of ID and nothing else other than maybe your car keys if you need them. This way, you don't have to be thinking about anything. You are prepared for the exam. Now, 
right before you take the test. They've walked you into the room. You sit down at the computer. Take a moment to stop. Take a deep breath and relax. I cannot emphasize this enough. This, quite honestly, in my opinion, relates directly to bullet point number one, getting a good night's sleep. It's all about the same thing. Put yourself in the right state of mind to be taking a, a difficult exam. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that word difficult in just a moment here, but get yourself in the right frame of mind to allow your brain to do what you know it can do because you've prepared for the exam. Just relax. When I first started taking certification exams, I actually had a two-day ritual that I went through to get myself relaxed for the exam. I don't need to do that anymore, but back then I did, and so I, I did what I had to do to get ready and relax for the exam. While you're taking the test, <laughs> this one's going to sound obvious, but don't forget to breathe. Not only do you want to stop and relax and take a deep breath before the exam, but make a conscious effort to stay calm and keep breathing. Don't panic. I will tell you that I have worked at test centers. I'm actually a certified test administrator, so I've been a proctor for certification exams. And I have witnessed all kinds of things ranging from people, believe it or not, passing out in the middle of the exam because they forget to breathe to the opposite extreme, which is hyperventilating or having a panic attack. Just keep yourself relaxed. It's no big deal. It's just a test. And if we go back to what I said a little while ago, if you signed up for the second chance offer that Microsoft may be offering, well, even more reason to relax because who cares if you fail take it again and I'll tell you something if you do fail this exam or any Microsoft certification exam that's all it means it just means you have to go back and take it again and if you were to fail X number of times and then finally you go in and you pass that exam nobody will ever know how many times you failed your transcript does not show how many times you fail an exam. It only shows when you've passed an exam. So when you go for a job or for a promotion or whatever the case may be and you are asked to show your Microsoft transcript, all they're gonna know is that you are certified. All right, now, while you are taking the test, you have the ability to skip questions and mark questions and come back and review and answer them at a later time. And this is something that I strongly recommend that you take advantage of. Because here's the problem. If you go through, oh, let's say a 50 question test, and these are timed exams, and let's say you struggled on a couple of questions to where you spent, you know, gobs of time, 20, 30 minutes on just, you know, one question, and then you do that again on another question. And now, all of a sudden, you look at the clock, and it says you've got one minute left to finish this exam, and you've got five questions left. What are you going to do? Well, you don't get penalized for guessing. If you don't answer a question, then it's wrong. <laughs> so at that point, you're just going to guess. You know, you're just going to click, you know, I, some people like to pick C, some people pick B, you know, whatever, whatever your favorite letter is. You're probably just going to go through and just click an answer and move on. Well, the problem is, is those last five questions might have been the easiest ones on the test and you just blew it and guessed at those when you would have had them right. So if you find yourself really struggling or you look at a question and you're thinking, where did that come from? Then just skip it and know that you can come back to it later and go to the questions that you do know the answers to. Now, the one other thing that I will personally recommend, and this is really nothing more than a personal recommendation from my own experience and from watching other test takers and their experiences, is if you don't know the answer to a question, don't answer it. Come back and answer it later. If you have a gut thought, you know, if you're looking at a question and you're saying, well, you know, gosh, I think it's this answer, but I'm really not sure. 
and you feel comfortable enough to answer it, that's fine. But don't ever go back and change that answer unless you have something compelling you to do so. And by compelling, I don't mean your brain telling you to do so just because you're freaking out and you're not sure. I mean, if you answer a question and then let's say 10 questions later, you have another question and you are able to read something into it to where you say, oh, wait a minute. Based upon what I now see in this question, I know I answered that other question wrong. That would be something compelling you to go back and change it. But otherwise, don't go back and change it. And I know that's tough to do. You get to the end of the exam and you have time left over and you go back and you're reviewing the questions you marked. You are going to second guess yourself 100% of the time. And I will tell you that the majority of the time, your gut was right. And don't dwell on a question. If you answered a question and you've clicked next to go to the next question, don't go thinking about that other question. Don't get stuck saying, gosh, I wonder if I got that other question right. No, you need to now focus on the next question. And here's the thing. I told you I would come back to talking to you about a, the word difficult. It's only a difficult exam if you are not prepared. So with that being said, the biggest tip I can give you is know the material and be prepared. If you know this material, you will not find this exam difficult. The exam is not easy. It is difficult. If you are well prepared, it will seem easy. So what's my number one recommendation? Know the material. All right. After watching this video, you should now be able to describe the requirements for both the new MCTS and MCITP certifications. You need to understand there is new alphabet soup and this is what we're going to have going forward. You should also be able to describe the upgrade paths for MCSAs and MCSEs to the new MCITP certifications. And finally, you should know how to sign up for an exam on Prometrics website and be ready to go out and take the test. All right, well, you should know everything you need to know now to sign up and go out there and just totally nail this 70-642 exam. So good luck and have fun with it.